Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome. Sorry, I just started on the wrong, on the wrong camera. And I'm drinking my tea, cold tea. Hello. Sorry. Um, yeah, Streamlabs have changed some stuff around and I'm still trying to get used to it. Anyway, you're not going to see my face for long. I'm going to get on with it. I'm really late. I'm so sorry. I've been prepping for a class tomorrow. And uh, yeah, time just got away with me. This idea came to me this afternoon. I was scrolling through Pinterest and I can't even tell you the picture I looked at, but suddenly this idea popped into my head about how to use some scrap um, pieces, like punched pieces or die cut pieces. Now it could be, I was inspired by a book and I will show you the book in a second. I've not actually had a lot of time to look through it, but I found it in a charity shop the other day. And it's interesting because I know I have a lot of followers, a few of you love to quilt, you love your fabric, and it's so fascinating, the crossover between card making and quilting and art and yeah, all that good stuff. So I, I found a fascinating book. So some of you quilters might enjoy this. And I suppose what it has done, it has set my mind going for perhaps how to use colour a little bit differently and shapes as well. Right now, I'm just looking to see who's on here. Um, could somebody, and I think I will name somebody because I don't want three or four of you doing it. I just need one person to share this video out on artful stamp in space so um, 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 um um janice would you mind sweetheart i know you're watching in bed but i know you're a dab hand at the old technical stuff um i'm i still am locked out of facebook right now and it is very frustrating because that's the way I communicate with a lot of you guys. So, um, Janice, would you mind just grabbing the link off here and just popping it into Artful Stamping Space? Because I know some of you guys um, get get that notification on there. So, yeah, thank you, Janice. That'd be awesome. Okay, I'm going to get the video. Um, sorry, the get the. Oh, I can't speak. Get the camera. The you know there. There we go. That's it. You know what I mean. Okay, I will quickly show you this book. It's called A Colourful Book by Yvonne Por Porcella. Porcella? Porcella? I don't know. I, I don't know what... what um... Anyway, I <laughs> look at this. I love this. Look, I flipped to this page. And I actually did this in the charity shop. And look what's there. The colour wheel. That's very similar to the colour wheel. I've got a lot of you guys to purchase. Anyway, um... It is full of very, very geometrical quilting. Uh, but look, oh, look at this. Does this remind you of some of the papers that we have at the moment? <laughs> look at that page. Just gorgeous inspiration. Um, and I think it's this sort of thing that I'm particularly drawn to in terms of you know just keeping the shape simple and but playing with repetition and so on so i will be getting a lot of inspiration from this book really pleased that i found it and look forward to seeing what you guys think of it as well um, oh look at that isn't that gorgeous how beautiful is that There we go, I'll just show you that again. Okay, so I think it's particularly this sort of style of stuff that I'm, I'm, you know, inspired by. Thank you, thank you, Mwah. thank you, Janice. All right, so I've already pre-cut a few things out and because I'm quite late, I'm hoping just to kind of try and get this done quite quickly um, and then maybe revisit it at a different point when I've got a little bit more time. Um, hello very quick hello to everybody who's on the live i'm not going to go and scroll through and do names um i, I just want to get get down and and sticking really so just so that you know what i used i used to cut out a lot of these shapes 
the beautiful shapes dies and in there we do have quite a few hexagons circles and the like i also grabbed out some punches so i've also pre-cut some of the fish shapes and do you recognize that that's the i think it's called pretty label punch that was in the mini catalog which i do believe has carried over but what i did was i just used a tight the, the side section of it because i really like this this shape here and i think that was it there, there were probably lots of other things i could have used but i i just want to get on and and get this done i'm wondering whether to use sticky tape yeah i think we will uh, i'll use the gray for now and I, I i don't really have much of a plan all i know is that i want to do some repeat patterning so i'm just gonna stick some tape on and a diagonal line oh so this is what when i Night, the night before a workshop I end up packing loads of stuff and then it's a bit of a, a kind of rummage to find everything when I go live because I've already packed it there we go all right so <laughs> got one two three or five of these okay let's see if i'd be able to fit how many i'd be able to fit in a row i'm wondering if i was to cut these in half no it wouldn't work okay right let's just see what will happen if I do that? Okay. Right, I've got no more that size. All right, so if I pull you down to about there. One, two, three. All right, let's try that. So another row of tape. Sorry, I was overthinking that then because I was a bit worried that I was going to run out of. Got to audition it again. Okay. Right, just do it. Just do it, Ruth. wondering if I ooh just about squeeze that bit on there that's what I was hoping for because <laughs> I could tell that because of this shape here I was like I need more okay let's do that so my little trick with double-sided tape is when you put the tape down, you need to push it down really hard and in one corner and it makes it easier to lift off. Okay, right. We're getting there, we're getting there. Just took a moment. All right. So this, sh this shape here, or this line here, I'm thinking of using the fish. Right here. 
maybe put those oh no I want to do it that way haha <laughs> okay I want to go that way I don't know, I'm aiming the, the, that part of the fish tail in the middle of the sticky tape because I know if I get it right in the middle of the sticky tape no I don't do I want the fish tails to show no I don't I'll rip these off okay so yeah as I said I'm aiming that that bit there right in the middle so this is quite a different sort of video than I usually make for those of you who perhaps are new to my channel I mainly do stamping but I love colour and shape and love just experimenting with alternative uses for stamping up products so I'm a stamping up demonstrator and so I'm very fortunate I get to play with a lot of these products nearly every day of my life. Uh, not every day of my life, but every day of my current working life. And I just love finding new ways and techniques of kind of seeing what else can be done with, with some of these products. So... So I cut quite a few of these purple hexagons out and quite like the idea with playing with some of these so that I put, um, I might have these layered with dimensionals, have them sticking up. I'm hoping that once I've stuck some of these down, this, these areas that just need an extra little piece, I'll be able to cut, cut these and then use that to fill that little section there. Okay, quite like that. Grab the dimensionals. Hi everybody! What a fab book. Thank you Janice. Thank you. Um, I thought so too. So how was your weekend, everybody? I'm trying to think what I got up to. It feels like so long ago now. <laughs> um, I did pop into the Zoom a little bit on the Saturday. And, um, now technically it is, it is over the, the, that Zoom. Although the link is still up and running, so um, you can pop in there at the moment because um, it's not being used for my daughter's schooling. So if anyone does want to go in there, that's absolutely fine. You're welcome to. Oh, I just feel like this is lopsided. Oh, it's because that one's lopsided. Okay. Oh, I'll tell you what I did watch last night. I watched... Um, on Netflix, the, the most modern version of Jane Austen, a, a, a film based on Jane Austen's Persuasion, is on there. Found it a little bit too modern and a little bit, you know that term mansplaining? Um, I don't actually know that term, but um, you know when people sort of over explain things sometimes in a slightly patronising way? I felt the film did that to me. It was like, it was almost like saying, well, you know, modern audiences aren't going to get the subtleties of Jane Austen. So we're just going to have to explain it to you. So I, I'm not going to give away the storyline, but the main protagonist does a lot of sort of talking directly to the camera, which of course is not really in the book or, you know, but it was, it was their way of kind of trying to tell the story. And I just found it too much. So much so that I, in the end, I had to go and um, watch the BBC version just to cleanse myself of the experience. Um, yeah, it was, 
that was interesting okay um, I think I might just need to cut some of these in half oh or use some smaller ones <laughs> that would be handy all right so do forgive me that I am doing a little bit of experimenting on this video. I've not ever done this before, so this is a little bit of let's experiment. And it's not a fully fledged idea as yet. But I will try and explain my thought process as I go along. OK, this is very much maybe I've chosen the wrong colours too. I think, you know, I, I think that blue and the purple are a little bit too dark. So we'll, we'll we'll look at this critically after I've finished it and then see what changes could have been made to make it a little bit more. I mean I did I did want to go for a very graphic um oh that's a bit you can see the purple um so you can see the white the white there let's just color that in don't like that it's the wrong purple but there we go Ooh, right so i've got a little bit of spare here so i could pop that one in to there oh that fits perfectly And I'll, I'm just going to get a fresh dimensional because that's already losing its sticky a bit. I'll pop that there. Um, Le Chat, yes, too modern. I don't like it. I love the 1995 and the 2007 version. So the 2007 version, is that the one with Rupert Penry? What's his name? Now, interesting fact, that version with Rupert Penry blah de blah can't remember the name of the, the lady actress but i share a birthday with that lady actress to the year and the date the date and the year she was also in uh the shape of water marvelous brilliant film and um yeah just a very enigmatic actress i i really enjoyed her performance and i think what i liked about if it is the 2007 version that you're talking about lisha is is I like the fact that she was not kind of your typical beauty, you know, conventional beauty looking person. Um, you know, be beautiful, you know, she was, how do I put it? She wasn't like your Hollywood glamour looking or even English rose. Um, she was quite, quite plain really looking. Um, and I, I quite like, like that about that version. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say about it? Oh, but I, I totally was besotted with, um, what is his name, Wentworth, the character of Wentworth in that version. I mean, he's just oh, gorgeous. Right, okay, that's that. I'm Yeah, I'm not sure about this row. I find it a bit too dark, but I have cut, um, what did I cut? I thought we, I could have this as a, fo or something as a focal point instead, like, you know, do that or something. So that could break up that blue. I'm not. I'm not particularly enjoying that. All right. So what else could we do? Oh, I'll cut that off first. Should we put some of this? Hmm. Okay, I think I'm going to do maybe do that. Oh, 
Bye, Nessa. Oh no, what does, I'm just missing comments about. What did Cindy say? Stomach virus. Oh, oh bless you. Hi, Jackie. So those of you just joining, we're just playing with shapes um, and trying to create some interesting textures as well. Oh, that's quite fun. Look at that. I can do a sort of bit of a fun overlap there. Hmm, okay, let's just use some of this tape. Just saves a bit of time. Sorry, I've just realised I want it to actually go up a bit higher. Or do I? Am I not going to fit it in? Oh, I'll try both ways. Let's do that. Sally Hawkins. Yes, that's it. Yeah, I don't think I've watched Fingersmith. Um, I maybe saw an episode of it and it wasn't really to my liking. But um, yes, I thought she was amazing in The Shape of Water. Interestingly, I also read that she has an autoimmune disease that um, uh, she has lupus and um, she has to be very careful with her you know energy levels and just has to take things carefully you know um, which I think she does because she obviously manages to you know have a acting career The way you are just throwing all the cut-off bits into your nice bits is really stressing me out. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Well, it's because my offcuts might be used. Are they, they are not offcuts. Not yet. Those are. You know, I might use those little bits yet. Shh, don't, don't, yeah, I can't, don't say it too loud, but they might hear you. Oh, no, I know I should have slipped that under there, really. But anyway, I've put the glue on now, too late. So Lashai, you've clearly seen seen that version. Oh, I don't want to give away the storyline, but there's a scene that is just hilarious. That that look towards the end. We're anti I don't want to give, I don't want to give it away, but we're in it as the audience, we're in anticipation for something to happen, and it's the longest way ever. Lashai, do not give it away. Just just put a smiley face if you know what I mean. We're like, for goodness sake, get on with it. And it just takes forever. In this particular version. Right, I might need to cut myself a few more of these because I'm thinking of taking this right to the end. Hello, Miss Heidi. Happy New Year. Don't believe I've said that to you yet. 
Lovely to see you. Okay, right. I wonder if I can get away with popping. Having a wee think. Yeah. Ooh, right, gonna pop that onto a dimensional. Just gonna put put that in the corner. Using, I'm just sort of trying to use the grid paper to help me line things up. Right, then I had the idea of raising up that and then having maybe another one there or a different size one. Hold on, let's see. Here we go with that one and then that one because I want to get rid of this big blob of blue. So if we have some of these green ones then sort of floating off over the top. I know they're slightly different sizes, but... Ooh, I could cut that section off and stick that up there then. Hmm, okay, let's just see what that looks like. Okay, I think I like that. Hello, Branton. Hi, Jody. I am really regretting not getting. Years ago, there was a hexagon punch, wasn't there? And I regret not getting that one. Hopefully, they'll come up with another one at some point. Because. Hexagons are awesome, aren't they? But this set of dies are great because you get they're nesting, they you know, they they are perfectly kind of distanced from each other. So if you want to nest them, they work really well. And maybe that's another thing to play with with this type of thing is layering on top, which I might just So I don't know if you can see, I'm kind of playing with the sides kind of in relationship to each other. And yes, this is actually going to become very layered. This reminds me of some cards I made a few years ago where I, got, I used lots of stripes and I stuck stripes on with 
the thin dimensionals. They made some really interesting cards. Okay, so if that goes there, that one should actually go there. If I'm following that rule of connectivity. Yeah, I think I will do that. So I just need to pop two little dimensions, another dimensional there, just to build up that layer. And then one on there. And another one on top of there. So that it so it it's the same height. Ugh. Oh well. Flip it over and cut it. Right, so as I said, because these are nesting, we can play with actually layering some of these up even further. Ooh. And if I had time, I would actually do these in slightly different colours. I'd maybe go, go lighter, like go with the parakeet party or something. But anyway, we don't have time to do that. So I'm just going to have a fun playing with layering these up for now. Thank you for indulging me to play with th this idea. And as I said, if you're if you don't like this, then I won't be offended because it's it's a bit of a departure from my normal types of videos. But I actually love all kinds of design and ways of using color and shapes. So I do like to you know just experiment with things that are a little bit out of my comfort zone because it, it's good to do that it's good to stretch your creative muscles and and do things that perhaps you wouldn't normally right do that one there And yeah, sorry if you, you found it hard to find this video today. I, as I said earlier, I'm I'm locked, currently locked out of Facebook. And so it makes it really hard for me to do my normal kind of announcements. Um, hmm. Okay. Right, well, for a first attempt, I don't mind it. As I said, I might have just done something a bit different. If, um... Yeah, I don't, I don't like the way the Pacific Point and the Gorgeous Grape are a little bit dark, but anyway. Right, I'm just going to see if there's any other little pieces that I can use on here. No, I, I like the division of the shapes, I think. Just looking at some of these. Right, I'm starting to have a play with the others now. I'm like, oh, what else can I do? Oh, right, okay, I've got those. I'm going to set this aside for a second. I'm wondering whether to play with doing it on white or black. Oh, I was going to do some black and white stripe, actually. So I've got little bits of things sticking. Get rid of those sticky bits. Um, I'm just 
get a white card base. I'm just going to cut some black stripes. It's a great stash buster card. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. I did. I, I grabbed loads of pieces of cardstock out of my scrap drawer. Oh, I usually keep all my scraps in A4 plastic bags. But to be honest, if I only have like a tiny piece in one of the bags, it's really annoying. And so I'm thinking, I need to actually put a, at least one sheet of cardstock in each of the scrap scrap bags. Because um, they don't lie properly in my... I'm just going to glue these on. Yeah, they don't lie properly in my drawers. I haven't got anything in them. Oh, it come down a bit. Ah. Sorry, I'm not looking at the chat though right now. I'm just really concentrating on this. Green stepping stones over the blue river. <laughs> yes, it is rather late. I should be in bed because I've got a class in the morning. But I needed to do this. I needed to just do it and have a go and see see how it would turn out. Okay, I just need to get on. I mean, who'd have thought such pleasure could be derived from just cutting and gluing? There's something really beguiling about just playing with shapes and colours and seeing how they interact with each other. And doing repetitive pat patterns as well. You just, you know, you decide on the pattern, you just do it. And so there's a, a predictability. There's a kind of a piece in the predictability, isn't there? 
just do it because you've decided the path has been chosen and you just do it you know Stick and plonk, yeah, absolutely. It also just popped in. Hi, Midge. Gina's a night owl. Oh. Okay, so I want to raise these ones up. So these ones are going to have two. Oh, I'm not sure. So two there. There. It's a great way to use dimensionals. Okay, so I want to line this up. So I'm again using my grid paper. I'm lining up that hexagon there. Okay. Now the reason I put two there is because I had one under there, so I wanted that to be slightly higher up. Uh, do I want that to be higher up as well? Not necessarily. I'll just put one there, one there, one there. Okay, cut these off. in there then I didn't whether to go for that a large yellow circle somewhere that oval panel Mm, I'll have a quick think. I'll stick these down first though. Thank you, Annika. Um Yeah, I'll I'll check what they'll be like for us, Cindy. I mean in the UK anything larger than half a centimeter has to go large letter so I'll yeah I'll pop it in an envelope and I'll tell you what 
thicknesses but yeah for sure if you know once it gets a bit thick then yeah hand delivery is best right you see i quite i i like seeing the staggered but now it's like i've lost i've kind of lost it really so i don't know whether just to completely almost pretend that the stagger didn't exist doesn't exist and just pop that there Up there and then maybe have half. Oh, yeah. I don't like the way it sits between the black. Ooh, still got some of these little diamonds. Okay, can I put that? Um, hmm. That's quite high. I'm going to have to put three, I think, on here. Three high, that is. One, two. Oh, sorry to hear that, Caroline. Did you deliberately stay in then? frustrating when that happens especially as you probably ordered some new goodies oh did you get any crafting done Oh, I wondered why that wasn't stuck down. Didn't remove the backing. <laughs> that would help, Ruth. Yeah, see, I have the opposite problem. Usually they deliver it the day before they tell me it's going to be delivered. That's traditionally how it's happened for me. Yeah, same here, Annika. Yeah, but I suppose you just get to know what your local depot is like. And if that's the general rule, then... That's what they're like. Oh, I tell you what, funny funny thing happened to me. I I placed an order with a company that sells um, clothes, 
and but I ordered other writer I tend to order accessories from them and I got their order last week then I had a whole package of the same order arrive on Saturday so that's what I did I spent most of the an hour a good hour and a half waiting on the phone for their customer service for me to tell them that they'd sent me extra stuff anyway after I spoke to the lady and explained what had happened she said oh I'm so sorry blah blah, blah. and then I said um by the way is this a free phone number that I'm ringing or will I be charged for this call and she went oh no sorry yes you will be charged I mean I was phoning from a mobile phone so I, I I'm, I'm gonna see if it does show up on my bill so I said, well, I've been on the phone for over an hour. And she was, oh, I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll tell my supervisor. Anyway, I got an email today with a, I have to send the products back. Um, but they've given me a £10 voucher. So um, I'm quite happy with that. The only thing is, like I said, I, I don't know if, um, I don't know if I'm going to be charged for the phone call. So I might just wait before responding officially and saying thank you very much um, and see if I um, need to kind of mess email them and say actually the phone call cost me such and such hmm no this is in danger of it looking like look a smiley face if I do that <laughs> I think I'm going to leave it there. Right. Thank you for everybody for indulging me who's sat through this video. I, as I said at the beginning of the video, I wanted to experiment with shapes and colour and just cut out a few things just to see um, what they would look like. And I definitely want to experiment a little bit more with this technique. And so I'm just trying to find a card base oh that one's not actually oh that one it's actually the size of a card oh there we go all right okay so i'm not actually gonna have a border around that one um let's see what this one oh wrong yellow Ugh. Let's see that one There we go. So very, very layered. Don't want to do another layer. No, no. I'll leave it there for now. Um, it's the sort of thing that you can sit and fiddle and play with forever, um, because yeah, it's it's cutting and cutting and sticking. <laughs> really good fun. So those of you who've missed this one, this one's actually quite layered. I've put dimensionals in between each layer of the hexagons so it's really kind of popped up quite a lot um, but it's just really fun just to play with these slightly more abstract ideas and shapes let's stick that one down um, and I'm going to put it in the masculine Monday category I'm going to put it in the masculine Monday playlist because I think cards like this um, can be enjoyed by the guys. I'm just going to colour in a little bit of that edge of that dimension. I really don't like seeing these white dimensionals. Um, oh, no, not the card roof. Maybe I should have coloured them before I used them. Yeah. Hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Well, perhaps I should have used the, the black dimensionals, but... Green. You like the diamond one. Oh. Yeah, I got into my stride with uh, this one. Just enjoyed it a bit more. 
I'm going to put a bit of green on there now, so I'm wondering if just to do that. Oh, a bit more than I intended. Never mind. Oh, I spoiled it now. You spoiled it now, Ruth. Anyway, I didn't mean to do so much of that line there, but anyway. Interesting. Good fun. Take care, Janine. I'm off too. Uh, you like the... What was that about the monochromatic? Love them. Would be interesting to have some pattern to us too. Yes, definitely. I think once you sort of start playing with the shapes and then you can think, ooh, what if... Yes, what if you brought a patterned element to it? Yes. Um... I have no idea why they don't make dimensional stickers in more colours. I, I think it's the expense and the fact that they just probably won't, wouldn't, like, <laughs> when you say more colours, it's like, well, which colours do they pick, you know? I suppose the primary colours to start off with and then maybe in between as well. But, yeah, I think if you know that you're going, they're going to be showing, then... Yeah, maybe colouring them beforehand might have been handy. I mean, some people just layer up with cardstock. Oh, look, that one I forgot to do as well. Okay. Right, I'm going to love you and leave you there. Um, it's like a piano. Yes, it is a little bit. Yeah. And I guess what I love about abstract, because I, I have found over the last few years, I have been drawn to abstract art a little bit more than, you know, conventional sort of looking art because I've got to play with shapes and how they sit with each other more and I enjoy seeing seeing that and also I enjoy looking at something and without it telling me what it should be and for me to make up my my own mind so yeah it's yeah Oh, that's a good point, Cindy. Actually, I remember a product coming out quite a while ago for people particularly who do decoupage, like layering decoupage. There used to be the silicon like glue that you could squeeze and then you just very gently laid on what you were going to lay on and then it would dry hard. Um, I think it was silicon. I don't know. If, yeah, obviously if you've got... Oh, no, I was going to say I've got a late. No, latex is completely different. Ruth, be quiet. Um, there we go. I'm going to go now. Thank you, Inika. Yeah. Take care, everybody. Lovely to see you all. And um, I look forward to seeing what you create out of these. Please do head to Artful Stamping Space, even though I can't get over there right now because Facebook are still analysing whether or not um, I've done anything wrong. <sighs> Facebook. There we go. Take care, everyone. Good night. Please remember to subscribe. Uh, would blue dots work? Not so well because they, they're not that.